stuff that these top level people have said, I think that makes them believe that, you know, mm. we're basically, you know, having UFOs that we're sending to Mars kind of thing. Mm. Okay. Well, regarding back engineering, you were telling us that we got the transistor from them. Any of you recall that? Anyway, why would they send us old technology? Remember how large the first transistor was in the 50s? About the size of a $2. One transistor, right? <laughs> yeah. Then you had these transistor radios from Japan. Now we have thousands or maybe even millions of transistors in the cell phone. Right. So, so why, why would we copy if those aliens are a thousand years ahead of us, why did they let us copy their ancient, you know, technology? Mm -hmm. Well, so, so something doesn't make any sense. And that right? could be is that they've always been kind of leaving technology so we could tr maybe for us to, to kind of copy and leaving possibilities of what you know humans could carry on with and and how we could maybe develop something based on their technology but i i from grant's pers and i don't know i don't know about any of this but from <laughs> from grant's perspective i think he's saying that they, they still there would be no need to spend hundreds of millions of dollars trying to bounce on, like so trying to um use the technology of anti-gravity to bounce something off of a table that they still can't do if we're so fur so much further, um, you know, advanced than that, they would be spending the hundreds of million dollars trying to do something like that. So is it because it's all it's all in the black budget programs and these people don't know about it? Of course, he he doesn't know and he you know admits he's not trying to say that this is not true. But I'm I'm just saying what I've heard him say many many times is that um, why are they spending any money trying to figure out very small things like rockets to the moon? Why are they trying still using rockets to go to the moon? The technology that came from the, you know, from the fifties or twenties or whatever that was from, why are they still sending rockets to the moon with, 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 you know, using the old technology, if they have brand new technology, like why are they still investing the money in that? So, and of course there's a million explanations to why they could be doing that, but. Mm. Well, are, are there two different UFOs? I mean, are there UFOs that, that leave a radioactive trace behind and are crashing and others that are maybe more spiritual, one can say? Well, again, this is not my mm. area, but, but I know what Grant thinks is that, um, that he thinks that things change over the years. So he thinks that in the original, like George Adamski, um, original, like it from the 50s, UFOs that had the three balls underneath that were landing, that were burning marks in the grass, and that had portals outside of the outside of the UFOs that people could actually see aliens like inside through the portal. So Grant thinks, and again, I, I don't, this is not my area, but I mean, Grant thinks that things change over time as humans evolve. So as we evolve, so does what we're seeing. So does the UFOs, so do the, you know, aliens or whatever, so does the technology. So he thinks that in the 50s, that's what we saw then, you know, like the Foo Fighters were from the war times where they were just seeing the, you know, the balls. And then it came the Georgia Damsky kind of crafts that were like all like looking like they were, you know, always <laughs> gonna crash or something. They weren't even very smooth. And now from 2020, you see things that pop in and pop out. So is it because these things are popping in and out of a different dimension? Is it because we're more evolved so we can see more into that? Is it because, <sighs> They are interdimensional, and that's what we believe in now. So the crafts kind of change because our, our, we've evolved enough so our um, own spiritual evolution or our technological evolution or something so we can believe that things can blip in and out of two different dimensions because they know about the dual slit experiment. You know, like maybe we can finally grasp that this is something that they can do, and that's why we're interpreting what they're doing into that. But in the 50s, who, who would have thought of something like if they were blipping in and out people would have just been like they wouldn't have even been able to fathom what that could mean where now we can fathom it because we do know what like, we're more evolved technologically i guess in our understandings of science or whatever that we can understand that that's maybe what they're doing and that's maybe why they're showing us that you know i don't, I don't know gordy you need to talk to yuri gell to fix your <laughs> clock 
Oh. <laughs> it was 10 minutes late and 15. Now it's, well, anyway. Oh, my clock? 20 <laughs> minutes late. No. <laughs> oh. so that's what we're talking about, uh, Grant Cameron. We should have him on the show. I thought he's too famous to even invite on the show. So you, you can ask for us. Grant can come on the Vancouver UFO meetup. Well, I'll certainly email myself. I've been on some of his group Zooms as well, but it'd be great to have Grant Cameron with the Vancouver UFO meetup if he's got time, you know, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, I think my battery needs replacing on my clock. <laughs> I don't think Guru needs to fix it. Well, maybe there are UFO bases behind the moon, and then there are some that come from other planets. What, what is the feeling? Or, or they, they just uh, are part of the spiritual world. Yeah, that's the um, question is how 3D of reality are these beings? Um, and yeah, I certainly don't know. But my, my uh, feeling is that this, the, the phenomena is more a interdimensional phenomena and um, they're not specifically actual 3D, like we are built out of matter beings that need to have a base on the moon. There obviously very well could be that. Um, and I'm up for everything and anything. And, uh, but I think that the majority of this phenomena that we're talking about that, you know, we can't see the reason we can't see it is because it's, it's mm -hmm. from a reality that we don't understand that we can't mm -hmm. explain whether that is uh, just um, summed up as being interdimensional or whether or multi-dimensional or you know who knows i don't i don't know what it could be but i tend to think that the more interesting stuff would be stuff that we are is beyond what we can fathom and that's why these things can like come into your room in the middle of the night uh communicate with you telepathically you know all, all these kind of things leave app ports or you know any kind of this paranormal stuff that can happen as opposed to it has to be a 3d gray being that you can touch that gets in a, a rocket and then goes to the moon or something, right? I think the more interesting stuff is the phenomena that that is trying to, and especially things like from the psychedelics point of view, is um, beings that are, that only come to you depending on what specific, you know, chemical you're ingesting and why is everyone seeing the very similar beings because where do those beings live? Are you going into a different space by taking the psychedelic that's leading you into a different reality because based on what you're experiencing, or is it just the same phenomena that is masking itself with a different um, face and instead of being an alien, it's going to be a machine elf or something. I mean, there's so many, yeah. I think it's for me anyways, I'm more interested in the multidimensional uh, aspect behind the phenomena than just thinking if there's, is there really a base on the moon? Because I think that that's just like us being the boring 3D humans that are just a little bit more advanced than us. So us in the not too far distant future that do just potentially only just create a boring rocket that just goes to the boring moon kind of thing. I, I would rather see the, the phenomenon being things that are like invisible and incomprehensible and multidimensional. So it's, it's, so it's, so the, so it's an infinite amount of possibilities. Cause I think it is an infinite amount of possibilities. I think there's an infinite amount of dimensions and parallel realities. So I, I tend to always go there instead of just the 3d, um, the 3d part of things, but. I think you're making a really profound statement there. So instead of you're saying you're not so impressed, say if we have bases on the moon, bases on Mars, so just human beings, like it's a black project, you're more concerned about kind of the higher realm. And you're saying, what is our relationship with these higher realms? And maybe how can we tap into how could that benefit humanity? You know, people talk about like a, five, a ship to 5D versus 3D. Some people will be left behind, behind on 3D. And others will go to, I don't understand what that means. It's going to be another planet for the 3D people and the 5D people will be here. Well, what's your interpretation of that? I think you're touched on something quite profound. Well, that's a rough subject. Um, I don't even know 100% what I believe about that. I've gotten many messages about that and I've read many things, Dolores Cannon's stuff being one of them, where people talk about shifting from 3D to 5D or 4D to 5D or 3D to 4D or whatever it is. Um, yeah, so it's um, interesting, and like I said, I've I've had messages, but it's uh, but I don't know what I believe. But it, there's obviously some kind of shift, 
that's happening right now, uh, spiritually, consciously, um, <clears throat> consciousnessly. There's obviously a huge thing that's happening right now where people are reevaluating their lives and I think their spirituality and their um, belief systems. And that I think and it is um, setting us up to being able to take a step up in some ways, <laughs> spirituality, or I don't know, evolutionarily, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but um, there's obviously something happening in 2020 where people are, are, are waking up in some way, shape, or form, and, are, and, and I just see it, and the messages I get are trying to, um, people are trying to join together more and kind of group together in trying to be more in like, in the oneness aspect of this and in the you know you know cosmic consciousness trying to like shift everyone at the same time to just kind of like be in a better shifting to a better place instead of the the place where it seems like we are right now which is like great divides in humanity and people like literally you know hating hating the other side and and making it about two different sides hating each other and splitting between the two um the two parts of, of, you know, civilization at this point. And it's a kind of a scary place for a lot of people to be. And it's hard for everyone to relate to each other. And there's a lot of people that are very fear-based and are getting caught up in the, um, in what's happening in the world. And uh, I don't know, for, for me personally, and for my messages, they're all saying to kind of like tune in to yourself and, and stay grounded yourself personally and stay away from the fear and try to make this a uh, 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 state of empowerment for each other and for yourself and trying to share that message that, you know, we are the manifestors and manipulators of our own future reality. And we have the ability and the power to be able to put ourselves in whatever um, future that we want ourselves to be in. And so we have to, you know, kind of stand together and help the people that want to be helped. And not like we're like great and we can help anyone, but I just mean, you know, if some people are scared and want to kind of move into a, a, a better place of more empowerment or something and um, us being the creators of our reality, I mean, then those are kind of like my messages that this is, we're in the center of this huge gigantic shift and whether it's a spiritual shift or a, you know, collective consciousness shift, I don't, I don't even know what it is whether there's 5D and we all die and turn to 5D or they all die and they stay in 3D and whether there's two earths. I mean, there's, a, there's, <laughs> I, I could talk for hours about what the, what the theories are, but I don't, I don't know. Um, I know there's a lot of theories and I just know that we just have to like kind of stay away from the fear and stay together and stay in a positive state of mind and know that we're the ones that are controlling and we, we control our own destiny and we're, uh, you know, manifesting our own futures. And the more we stay collectively together and um, try and help if anyone wants help or, you know, bring people to getting out of fear, I think that's the most important thing, especially like in this day and age, September 2020, right? Should have written about a bunch of that down. That's very good. All of that. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to write or are you writing now? You must be. I, I really only type the channel stuff. I'm a horrible writer. I, I wouldn't you know what ever I, put you out. You know what I do? I, <laughs> what? Write, I write poetry and I write it out longhand. And I'm a terrible writer. So what I do is I use my math dictation. I dictate it all out. And then I have to correct all the damn mm -hmm. stuff. But that's how I get it out so that it's, you know, type written and people can read it. Same idea. But I think oh. you'd be a good writer. You should put some <laughs> of your ideas together. You go off on a tangent quite well, and you don't stop. You let yourself keep going. A lot of people don't want to do that. A lot of people aren't interested in challenging themselves. Your awareness, you've been to places already that your awareness has been challenged. And it, I think it's pretty obvious that you're, you're just going to keep looking no matter what. That's a good thing. I, I'm, I happen to be interested and like learning. <laughs> and yeah. so that just happens to be, yeah. So, some people aren't interested, right? And some people are interested in building motorcycles or something. So it's just, yeah, I'm just uh, yeah, I I'm guess just so. Yeah, in just thing. interest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Dustin, you're saying you don't actually write yourself, but you channel. So, when the inspiration channels you, then you're moved. You probably type fast at that point, right? So, in a way, it's not you. It's like in Buddhism, there's no self, the idea that there's no real mm. permanent identity. So, we, we don't know mm. where things are coming from. I mean, I think that's what you mean by, by channeling, right? Yeah, Desta, when you do channel, um, is it 
uh, a consciousness you're um, channeling? Uh, does this consciousness have a name or identity? Well, okay. I... I do, you know, like go into a, a meditative state and then ask for if there's any information, like how I do it now. I've been doing it for five years. And so it's like evolved over that time. But now, um, yeah, like I go into the meditative state to make sure that I'm trying to shut down my left brain so that nothing's coming from me. And then I basically um, ask for if there's any beings that have a message um, I used to just think it was my my own higher self that was doing the channeling. So I used to just wait until I could, you know, until some things started coming through and then I started typing it. Um, and, uh, but now, yeah, so, so they say that they're, like they say, they claim to be beings sometimes. So sometimes actual beings that we would know, like ETs or, you know, different groups, um, councils or, you know, they, they claim to be a whole bunch of different things. And that's why I was saying earlier, I don't, you don't know if any of them are telling the truth, if it's one thing <laughs> yeah. that is saying a whole bunch of things. So I, I don't, um, if they say it, I'll type it. And, um, you know, it, it's okay. something that's coming through. So I'm getting the impression of what they're saying. And I'm just like recording what is coming through um, and all the messages that's coming through. So I, and I type all that. So I, th that's the, okay. that's how I channel and I type everything and then it's written and I just compile those, that stuff into books. So I don't okay. write myself. I'm not like consciously writing. I, I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> well, some people claim to have a muse. They have a source of inspiration. Uh, I've met uh, people in the music industry, uh, actors and that kind of thing. They, Robin Williams was um, asked if he had a muse and he said, yes, I had a muse. And so some actors do get into character or they write poetry or they write uh, scripts and stuff and they claim they have a source of inspiration. Now the question is, what is that source? Because there could be a variety of sources and some of it could be trickster and some of it could be okay. Like, like and Grant, uh, yeah. sorry, Mika. And Grant would definitely say, my gosh, my cat is starving, I guess. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Can you introduce your dog to us? You want to show us your dog or your cat? Cat and the, the dog. Show the audience. Here every couple of minutes. Mika. They can be famous. They can be famous. <laughs> Let's show, see, show them on YouTube here. They've both been here a handful of times. She's just sitting out there wanting me to come feed her, so she's not in here. Oh, here like comes you, if you need a break to go to a glass of water or take a break, you can go and come back it's if you need to. Yeah. Oh. oh, there's the cat. Okay. Oh, there's the dog. Oh, the dog. <laughs> yeah, the cat is still right there. But uh, yeah, I do have to go. But um, to 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 let him out and to feed her. But um, yeah, like Grant Grant would say that this um these are downloads. So this muse that you're talking about for um whether it's for musicians or artists or inventors. Like I mean, Grant has a couple books about this, right? One of them's called Inspired: The Creative yeah creative oh my god i can't even remember what it's called now the cre creativity of the paranormal world i can't remember what it's called um and another one called tuned in um the paranormal world of creativity so and that one's just about musicians so so his <laughs> hit that those whole books are about people getting these these instant downloads whether it's a uh, uh, music and it's uh, an entire song that they can then write and put out and some of these songs are the most the most popular songs that have ever come out like hey or uh not hey jude sorry oh my gosh um i can't think of what song it is now but um some of the beatles songs like there's all all sorts of those books are filled with um inventions that have come that people said you know they came in one split second poetry that has come to yeah. people in one split second they write it down it's it's their most famous poem or whatever but it's literally been so that's you know people could say that that's channeling that it's come to them from somewhere where is it coming from is it their higher self is it their are they channeling it from someone or are they is it their future self that's giving them this because in this life they were supposed to experience a you know a number one hit of you know in, in for music or our invention or is it their future self giving it to them because humanity needed this invention at this time uh, absolutely is it the trickster i don't know what the the purpose of the trickster giving them some you know, number one hit or some big invention or, or something like that, but you don't know where it's coming from. But, but Grant's interpretation and the books, those books of his are, are downloads that are coming from the other side. So whether that's the Akashic Records, your higher self, your yeah. you know, larger, the cosmic consciousness, your larger, you know, 
state of being everywhere the Akashic field is or just the ether where all the ideas of anything that's ever happened to anyone before is just registered here and we're just tapping into that. And it's, you know, just stuff that has been, you know, that has happened in the past. Do the ETs leave that stuff there and we tap into what the ETs are doing? Is it your dead grandmother that's just, and that was one of the ones for Paul McCartney. Oh, oh my gosh, I can't think of what it is. Oh, is it Hey Jude? I can't even think now, but it's, um, let it be. So he's yeah, let it be. Mother Mary. So Mother yeah. Mary, but Mother Mary is his actual. So you think Mother Mary means like Mary, you know, but, um, but I guess what he was saying is he woke up one night after I think his mom died and she was standing at the edge of the bed and she said to him, let it be. And then he was inspired when he woke up. Okay. He had the whole song in his head. He wrote it down instantly. And, and that's one of the biggest Beatles hits that there was. Right. So well, I didn't know that story. That's wow. Makes sense. Isn't it? Yeah. Paul McCartney's mother's name was Mary. Yeah. Oh. And, but because she, because he says mother Mary, you know, everyone I think interprets it to be the mother Mary that it's, it's not, um, it's uh, not the Catholic, mother Mary. Yeah. Not the Catholic mother Mary. Yeah, exactly. Uh, was uh, Paul McCartney's background Catholic? Uh, I think so. I don't even know if he says that, if he says that in the book, but that those two books okay. inspired the creative, oh my gosh, I can't think of what the book is called all of a sudden, but he, those okay. two books inspired and tuned in are the two books that are filled with examples of downloads that people have gotten and how they've, how they've described what the feeling of the download was. So whether it was just like in one split second, I got the entire song and it was this song. So it's like every yeah. artist and inventor and poet and things that you can imagine, but it's their um, quote, their direct quote as to how they perceived that information. And a lot of it was in a dream. A lot of it was their deceased relatives coming to them. A lot of it was an ET standing there at the foot of the bed. They, yeah. they were abducted. They came back and they felt this. They just felt the connection. They saw the connection coming. They ran to it and had a pen and paper and and, and scribed like an uh you know yeah. all down all different um, examples of how this uh, this uh, creativity comes to people and, and Grant would say in downloads from from whatever the other side you know whatever that even means yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah, but I guess you've got to go, Des. You want to mention the services you write on your website and your website name. We can put your, your website and email address below this video as well for people. For sure. Yeah, well, my email address is like feeltheshift.ca, but I think it really comes up under quantum um, energies, quantumenergies.ca. It's, it's just a Weebly uh, website that I made, but um, uh, my email address, yeah, is barnabyd at mts.net. And um, on my website, I have the books there. And I, and if, if it's in person, I offer QHHT sessions for the regression therapy. And I do long distance, um, like dowsing and Reiki and a handful of things that are all on the website. Do you do like regression hypnosis long distance? What's the QHHT? What does that mean in English? So it's, it's quantum healing hypnosis technique. That's the Dolores Cannon form of uh, regression healing. And you, you have to do it in person. If there's some kind of disconnect and like the internet goes down or something while you're in the middle of, of regressing someone, it's not, you know, super, it's not super dangerous, but you know, you can't take any chances that the, you know, your Wi-Fi goes out and the person's, you know, under hypnosis and then you can't get a hold of them again. <laughs> They're like, you know, sleeping or whatever. So it's not safe to be doing stuff like that online. So the QHH2 or the regression has to be done in person and um, all the other like energetic kind of stuff like dowsing and, um, you know, uh, Reiki and all that kind of stuff is all long distance because it's just uh, energy work. So, yeah. Hey, well, we'd love to have you back another time, Dessa. This has been excellent. Just such Thanks, an excellent Brian. talk. You're going for two and a half hours. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks for being here. You're welcome. Thanks, Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, we'll see you guys later. Yep. Yeah, bye. I know. Bye. Uh,